hey what's up so I'll show you now how we can compile our JavaScript to older uh, browsers to work on older browsers and um, how we can minify it so to start and I'm sorry I'm really tired but um, so the code will be here sorry will be here in compile JavaScript so to do that like usual we will install a couple of things a couple of plugins that will work with Gulp so npm install uh, at babel ba, uh, el then forward slash core then put space at babel forward slash preset preset sorry env this is like the configuration rules we will use to compile our javascript i think this is the most famous one i'm not that good at babel but i will show you how we can compile our stuff uh another thing i will do and i'm copying pasting from something that i'm already done i think now gulp uglyfy this is to minify and uglyfy our javascript and gulp babel i will put a link in the description for the documentation for all of these so you can take a look at them all right so let's go to our gulp jazz I'll close everything and open it again hopefully they will be installed um, correctly without any network issues anyway okay nice everything installed com completely so const I will create a value called a variable called uh, babel I will require uh, gulp babel okay so now let's go to our compile javascript let's do the same thing so i will create or i will return source then i will sync to get all the paths for all for, for the path to go, get to get all the paths for the files that this path i will uh, pass here will be will be matched with so i'll start from our path which ends in our source now I will go to JavaScript, this folder. Now anything inside there, how many, no matter how nested there it is, go and grab it. So now I will pipe this with the Babel uh, function that I imported here, this one from this module, and this is a function. So I will call it, will return a stream as well. It will accept an object. At the end, I will just pipe it again and put it inside a list. It will be the same thing like here. And here, this accepts a couple of configurations. Uh, a preset. This will be an array. So I'll put at babel, then forward slash environment. Actually, if you copy this and open your browser, just type it like this. Pretty sure you will see a good documentation for it. Yeah, this one. You can actually read the at the top. So Babel pre preset dot the sorry preset forward slash or preset hyphen environment is a smart preset that allows you to use the latest JavaScript without the need to, to micromanage which uh, syntax transforms and optionally browsers uh, browser polyfills. If you don't know, if you don't know about polyfills, uh, for example, some browsers support some stuff and some of them don't. To make the browsers that don't support that support it, you will use a polyfill. I think uh, there is a good example, native uh, model, or model, sorry, HTML. This is actually, uh, yeah, dialog, native dialog. This is actually uh, now a native HTML element. How I can display it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have, yeah. As you can see, this is native dialog from the browser, but uh, only Chrome, as far as I know, uh, support that. It's really awesome. No JavaScript actually required. I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's an advanced example, but let me try to find a small example. What was it? Yeah. Uh, 
I believe this one, I mean, we have this JavaScript, but it's really small. It's just opening and closing the model. But as you can see, you need polyfill, which to make it support, uh, to make it supported in other uh, browsers. I think, yeah, it's only Chrome that supports that. So this is example, you can actually install polyfills alongside with Babel uh, to support some stuff. I believe you can't out of the box uh, use a sync and await in Babel. You need to install some uh, polyfills to do that. So no, when you face errors, if you're writing some JavaScript, you face some errors, you need to Google that error so you will find what is the plugin you will install with Babel to support that uh, code in that browser. But uh, async and await, for example, will be supported in Firefox and Chrome. Even you don't need Babel, but in other browsers, uh, they won't. And the way that uh, Babel do it, they will convert it to another uh, code. And that code won't work unless you install some packages uh, with Babel and stuff like that. So you will keep seeing a lot of errors when you are using that, uh, when you are using Babel. So my advice is to just search for them find the correct plugin, add it to the workflow, and you'll be set. In this video, I'll just show you how we can compile and minify as just scratching the surface. Uh, the surface. There is so much you can do, all right? So, close that. This is our preset. Okay. Now, you can actually make all of these shorter. So it says I'm returning at the first line from the function. I can remove the body remove the return and yeah that's it I will do the same here and the same here Oops. all right now to minify our JavaScript we already installed the uglify the gulp uglify so let me import that here. So const uglify be equal to require gulp uglify. So let me also remove that. So just return source. Now remove the callback. Did I remove it up there? Yes. Okay. So starting from source, let's get all the files as an array of paths in this path which is go to our path then go to the dist and everything that ends uh, in javascript no matter how nested they are obviously we don't need that nested but uh, just in case now pipe that stream to the ugly five stream which also to the ugly five function that returns a stream to be uh, specific now pipe it again to the dist function and call it and pass to it the join with path and now dist so this will aggify uh, the same functions so npm run dev I think we will yeah yeah uh, that's obviously we will face some errors because there is no javascript files in our dist and this one tried to access them so let's create a, a file called main.javascript Let's do some stuff inside of it. So, const data or get data would be equal to a function that returns fetch the fetch API. And let me show you a cool API we can use for free. It's called uh, JSON placeholder and go posts. I really like it, but I wish nobody abuses this uh, API. Uh, so, I'll just put it here. Or demo uh, remind me later this is uh, my operating system wants me to upgrade anyway now then I'll convert the result to JSON then I will pass the log function from the console object to it to log that I can I can call it and I will do some stuff so const data some stuff that won't work in all the browsers so I'll get array of numbers. So five, four, six, two, seven. Then I will destruct from this array 
the number one and store it inside a value co a variable called one, then two, then three. Now const data two will be equal to array. I will destruct the first data here. Then I will add it or another array and destruct that nine, eight, ten. You see the syntax in uh, React and other libraries. So let's run npm run dev now and see our code. Everything should be fine. Um, let's go to our desk. This is our main, but as you can see, it's ugly file to our one line. And this is brow the browser. I will close it. So everything is minified to one line. I want to see how the code uh, looks like. So I will stop this and go to our gulp file just to show you that we are actually compiling this JavaScript to older versions. So I will put, oops, I will put this in the body of the function. Uh, this is a, another keyboard. I'm not used to it. Sorry. So I will commit this and call the code back here, just to mark this uh, task as finished without doing anything. So npm run dev. Let's go to our main side our desk. As you can see, it's using the strict mode. It's converting uh, const to vars. So let's open this side by side. So it's converting const to var. Uh, a raw function, some browsers don't support that, so they are converting everything to the function keyword. So from function, yeah, yeah, they are just using the normal functions. Um, they are typing return, and even the callback functions, they are putting function. Uh, they are adding semicolons. I'm, don't, I'm not adding them here. So as you can see, this one will stay the same, but const will be converted to data. Now, as you can see, the structuring. So this syntax is equivalent in all JavaScript to this syntax, which is very nice. And look at this one. So these structure or spreading the arrays, these two arrays inside this array, uh, is equivalent to this one, which is nice. Uh, let me show you how a sync await will look like. So let me return here. Oh yeah, it's opened here. So let's convert this to a sync. Now await. So just look at this. What is this, right? I think they are using generators. Uh, if you search for a star, you will see a function with a star, I think. I mean, they are using, pretty sure this is generator. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but uh, this won't work out of the box in the browser. Uh, this code you need to install some uh, extra plugins in Babel to make it work uh, you can find this on your own this is most like this is uh, about gulp itself not about uh, uh, this kind of stuff not about uh, mini uh, not, not about uh, bundling our JavaScript and makes it work uh, everywhere not about that so but it's really easy if, if you understand gulp if you understand how to build your workflow you can do that very easily but yeah, this is just a small example to show you that we are actually compiling our JavaScript. So let me return that. Uh, this is the compiled version. Let me close this. Let me return this. And close that. So this is really nice. The only thing you need to do is to import so section or not section, sorry, script, script with source, uh, main.js, and that's it. Or dist, sorry, dist and main.js. Yeah, that will be it. So another thing before I jump into the next video, uh, if you have another file here called maybe help us to JavaScript, and maybe you will define a function, we'll do some stuff. And you would export that maybe in the new syntax or the ES6 uh, module like this. So you'll import an ob you'll export an object that has this key with this value. This is so you can do this and it will work. 
or you can do export like this so I'm exporting this function from here and let me import it here to use it and this is actually in the browser not Node.js right so go to the helper function and import func now let me use func so npm run dev let's see what the compiled version will look like so we have our helper so let me uh, make everything readable I have prettier installed as you can see so I will just reformat everything so we have this function which is being uh, added to this global object and it's getting uh, exported and let's go out to our main and look at the syntax so in ES6 which is uh, a newer version of JavaScript that uses the ES6 module so we are using the import and export keywords but in all the JavaScripts we have the require and module.exports so we have the require function to import stuff from other files but now if we went if we go to our browser and let's open the inspect tool you will see that require is not a function and why is that because and you should know that I, I believe you already know it but I will just say you can actually close the video go to the next one but I will just keep explaining so the browser don't, don't understand the JavaScript module systems it does not understand import and export and it does not understand require and module to, to uh, export it does not understand that I know some cases you can put script like this with a source now with a type you will put a module you can put here the import and export and you will put here a link actually and this will work uh, I know but in this case in our case this won't work because the browser does not understand the require function it does not understand that I need to get this value of this function from this uh, file and put it here so to solve this issue what people uh, or the community of JavaScript produces it produces a tool called Gulp uh, sorry it, it, they produce it a tool called Webpack and Browsify and these tools will resolve these functions the require and the import before serving these files so they will execute maybe alongside with Gulp and or with Gulp to maybe after everything have been finished from Gulp you will get these files and uh, pass them to Webpack Webpack will resolve these uh, require functions or Browsify can do the same or in my opinion I believe using uh, Webpack only Webpack will do the task of Gulp, Jazz and Browsify so I, I w I'm planning to create videos about uh, Webpack itself because everything we do here in Gulp we can do actually in Webpack so this is actually not required and it's it's a little I think it's a little bit more easier in Gulp as well in in Webpack as well so I highly recommend that you learn Webpack uh, I think the main reason is you can you can use these kind of stuff in your uh, development for the front end applications so you can define functions like this and export them variables functions classes whatever and import them like, like this and this will still work this will still valid uh, so yeah, I will remove it we don't need it I'll close this as well so yeah just this just to tell you maybe I will I believe, I believe I will show you how we can do this maybe at the end but just explain it uh, as fast as possible without uh, explaining uh, the web back basics I will create an, then I will create another series uh, I'll show you how we can uh, build a web back workflow compiling building watching um, um, from scratch yeah thank you thank you for watching